Hello you gorgeous person, this is Chris from Texpad, and I'm here with two smartphones that could almost be twins, at least in the Danny DeVito Arnold Schwarzenegger sense of the word. We've got the Samsung Galaxy S10 here on the left and the Honor View 20 here on the right. Both rock a similar design with this punch hole camera up front, meaning that screen can basically stretch from edge to edge. Of course, the S10e is a bit more expensive than the View 20. Uh, it's 669 quid here in the UK compared with the 500 pound View 20. But the whole reason for this comparison is the fact that the View 20 is actually very close in respect to the Galaxy S10e in terms of the specs and a lot of the features and performance that it offers. So which one might be best for you? Let's check it out. And don't forget to plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers. So first of all, if one of your priorities is quite a compact device that's easy to handle and use one-handed, then I'm probably not going to shock anyone by saying the Samsung Galaxy S10 might be your favourite of the two. It's a 5.8 inch smartphone compared with a 6.4 inch on a View 20, which is obviously quite a lot bigger in terms of all of the dimensions. That said, thankfully you do get decent one-handed modes on both smartphones as well. So for instance, you can shrink the display on both of these smartphones to make everything nice and tiny, make it easy to manage. And as you can see, that same feature is available here on the Honor View 20, hooray! Now the whole reason for the punch hole camera is basically to allow that screen to fill the front of the phone without any nasty notch action or anything like that involved. In both cases, definitely does the job nicely. Here on the Honor View 20, you can actually mask it from view as well if you're not a big fan of that whole punch hole camera action. Just go to notch and click hide notch and it just adds a black bar across there so it's like it almost doesn't exist. Personally I don't mind that little punch hole camera at all, it's minimal disruption at all and most of the time when you're in an app it's kind of off the uh, the grid anyway so it doesn't actually intrude on what you're doing. Both phones sport a metallic edging and then around back it is a glass finish. It's a bit more rugged here on the Galaxy S10, however it's Gorilla Glass 5 here on the back. You actually get Gorilla Glass 6 on the front as well. The Honor View 20 there is no Gorilla Glass action, but so far touch when it seems pretty durable. We've had it a couple of months now, there are a couple of tiny little nicks on it, but otherwise it's absolutely fine. You do get a, uh, a transparent cover bundled in the box as well, which is always handy. You can pick up both phones in a few different colours. The Galaxy S10 sports all of Samsung's usual prism hues, including a slightly fetch and pink model as well. Here on the Honor View 20, you can pick it up in a light or dark blue, as well as black as well. We love the funky V effect that you get when it catches the light just so. As you can see there, it's a funky bit of pattern action, definitely very eye-catching. The Galaxy S10 e may be on the more rugged in terms of general durability, it's also more water resistant as well. It's got full IP68 dust and water resistance, whereas the Honor View 20 sadly lacks those, although it's absolutely fine if you use it in the piss and rain, as I have discovered many a time. Now if we talk fingerprint sensors, you get a rear mounted sensor here on the Honor View 20, which is actually mounted on the edge of the Samsung Galaxy S10 e, just like the classic Sony Xperia's. The Galaxy S10e sensor is slightly awkward to reach up to if you use your phone in your left hand. You have to kind of awkwardly reach up and bend your finger around like so. It's a lot easier to use with your right hand, however, as it's just a quick tap of your thumb. And the good news is that both sensors are fast, reliable and accurate. Just a quick tap of your finger and boom, straight into the desktop. It's nice and easy. If we have a quick run around at the, uh, the rest of the design as well, you get Type-C USB in order for charging and you do actually get a 3.5mm headphone jack on both of these smartphones as well. It's mounted on the top of the Honor View 20 and on the bottom of the Galaxy S10e. So now onto those screens. So as I mentioned before, it's a 5.8 inch display here on the Galaxy S10e compared with a 6.4 inch on the Honor View 20. However, you do get a nice bit of dynamic AMOLED tech here on the Galaxy S10e, whereas it's just yeah, standard LCD here on the View 20. Now you do get full HDR10 plus support here on the Galaxy S10e as well. So if you go on the likes of Netflix and stuff, you'll see you'll be able to actually stream in HDR and the results are absolutely fantastic. You get really strong contrast, nice crisp images. You get those nice deep blacks, which are particularly useful if you like watching Marvel shows or the likes of Stranger Things uh, and colors and the rest really leap out at you as well. That said, the View 20 can produce quite punchy colors as well, despite the fact that it's not an OLED panel. You know, some of those brighter, more vivid hues when you're looking back at photos, when you're viewing anime, things like that, they really do stand out, it looks really nice. You get a full HD plus resolution in both of these smartphones as well, so nice crisp details when it comes to all your visuals. You got the option to play around with the actual color output and everything as well, so for instance they're both in vivid mode 
at the moment. You can scale that back to natural or normal if you want a, uh, a more sort of easy on the eye experience. And you've got the likes of the blue light filters for uh, even and viewing and stuff like that as well. So yeah, there is a clear difference between the two in terms of the quality of the image. The Galaxy S10 e is undoubtedly the victor in this round. But that said, the Honor View 20 is absolutely fine just for kicking back and chilling with a bit of Netflix, YouTube, whatever. And to be honest, most people probably wouldn't even really notice the difference unless they had the two side by side. So next up, an audio test. Let's start with the Galaxy S10 e. These are both on maximum volume, of course. Now let's go on to the Honor View 20. So as you can hopefully tell there, the Galaxy S10 e definitely puts out the, uh, the more full-bodied, richer output and definitely a bit more powerful on the volume front as well. It does actually have a stereo output, so it outputs from the earpiece and the bottom mounted speaker simultaneously. Whereas here on the Honor View 20, uh, it's just the mono output from again, the bottom mounted speaker. No great shakes though, both of them support 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Of course, you've got full Bluetooth and everything if you want to connect a pair of wireless phones anywhere. So now onto the software and both smartphones run Android Pi version nine as their base, but they offer a very different software experience because of course the manufacturers have slapped their own overlays and features on top. So over here on the Honor View 20, you get the Magic UI and here on the Galaxy S10e, you get Samsung's new One UI, as you can see there, version 1.0. Now the general Android experience is basically the same. You get your apps tree on both of these smartphones. You can hide all of that shenanigans away. You don't have to have them all cluttered on the desktops. However, if you swipe in this direction, you will immediately notice a difference. You get the uh, the old Google feed here on the Honor View 20, whereas you get a bit of Samsung's own Bigsby Assistant here on the S10e. Pull down the notifications panel and it's basically the same shenanigans, all your notifications listed there. And then you pull down further and you've got a bunch of shortcuts to uh, all of your most needed features. And of course, that's all fully customizable as well if you want to mess around with exactly what's exhibited there. Now, of course, we've already discussed a couple of the bonus features that you get, such as that one-handed mode. We get plenty of other stuff shoved away in here as well. Quite often, the same features are mirrored on both smartphones. So, for instance, you've got digital well-being here on the S10e. It's digital balance here on the Honor View 20. This just shows you exactly how you're wasting your life staring at your smartphone and allows you to manage your time a bit more efficiently. And as well as that fingerprint sensor as well, you also get a nice bit of facial recognition with both of these smartphones too. It's not full on 3D facial recognition because it is of course just the tiny punch hole camera, uh, but it does the job absolutely nicely across a range of conditions. And you've got the old raise to wake feature on both these smartphones as well, so that you just pick up your phone, it'll scan your mug and you're straight into your desktops. I also like how you get the full Android Pie style gesture navigation on both these smartphones as well. So you can just switch to gestures at any time, full screen gestures. And what this allows you to do is for instance, just swipe up the side of the screen here on the Galaxy S10e in order to go back. You can swipe from the sides here on the Honor View 20 in order to go back. If you swipe up from the middle, that takes you back to your home screen. And you can also quickly and easily bring up your recent apps as well if you want to get rid of anything or just quickly shift to a different one. And of course, both Samsung and Honor have packed on plenty of their own apps on uh, both of these smartphones as well. So for instance, you get a health app in both cases, you get resource management, pretty much all the stuff you could possibly need. One thing that Samsung does do better, however, is connected homes uh, thanks to its SmartThings app. So basically, if you've got any smart devices about your home, such as smart bulbs, for instance, the SmartThings just allows you to quickly connect to all of those and uh, fiddle about with them using the Galaxy S10 e was you don't really get an option for that on the Honor View 20. But basically the upshot is that both of these phones are feature dense and chances are they'll do what you need them to do, so no worries. Now when it comes to the performance, both of these smartphones use a chipset of the manufacturer's own division. You get Samsung Exynos chipset here and the Galaxy S10e and you get Huawei's own Kirin 980 here on the Honor View 20, backed by six or eight gigs of RAM in both cases, depending on which model you actually go for. As you can see, these are both the six gig models, so it's a fair fight at least in the benchmark and test. If we dive into the history, we'll see that, of course, the Samsung Galaxy S10e does 
beat the Honor View 20 on performance, but it's not a massive gulf between them, especially when it comes to that multi-core score. So they will both happily run a nice bit of multitasking, a couple of apps at the same time, apps running in the background, you won't see any slowdown. So let's just clear all of the apps from the background and then we'll try loading up a couple. Um, the Generally, isn't much of a gulf between the two. A couple of times I've seen the Honor View 20 actually load stuff up uh, quicker, although it does tend to be the Galaxy which is the winner in this particular battle, as you can see there, about a second quicker there. A little bit of Spotify. As you can see, sometimes the Honor View 20 actually has it in terms of uh, loading up apps. There's not much difference it's because Magic, just like the Emotion UI in which it is based off, is very, very efficient when it comes to loading up apps and prioritizing. And good news if you like a bit of PUBG because you can play the game on full detail levels with a nice crisp frame rate in either case. As you can see there, they're both set to the HDR setting uh, with a high frame rate uh, and certainly there's very little in the way of stutter or lag. I've noticed pretty much nothing here on the S10e and of course on the Yonaview 20 you've got Huawei's on GPU turbo feature which helps to maintain that solid frame rate as well so it's actually optimized on that device. So we'll see that even when you're running about a place, even if you're bombing around in a, uh, a vehicle or involved in a really high intensity gunfight, uh, you should see very little in the way of stutters or stammers. So if you've got a competitive spirit, then uh, either of these handsets will do the job. Now before I forget, uh, both of these smartphones come with a choice of either 128 or 250 gigs of storage. These are both 128 gig models. Of course that's plenty, even if you download a lot of apps, a lot of Netflix movies to watch on the go, that'll keep you going. It's only really if you shoot a lot of 4K home movies on these bad boys that you're going to start to run out of space. So no worries on that front, and you also get micro SD memory card support here on the Galaxy S10e as well, up to 512 gigs, so you're doubly sorted. However, when it comes to the battery tech, the clear winner is the Honor View 20. It's got a mighty 4,000 milliamp cell stuffed inside. We generally get a day and a half to two days of use on that, depending on how intensely we're using it. Here on the Samsung Galaxy S10e, unfortunately, not so strong. As you can see here, it's already down to 59%. Um, it generally lasts just about a full day, as long as you're not hammering it with the likes of PUBG, uh, video stream and things like that. Otherwise, yeah you're going to be struggling. Of course, you do have various power modes as well, so you can go maximum power saving, etc, etc, if you need to. And of course, you get the uh, usual power saving modes and ultra power saving modes, etc, here on the Honor View 20 as well. You get fast charging on both these smartphones as well. Nice bit of uh, super charge here on the Honor View 20, which I can never get enough of seeing. However, the Galaxy S10e is more advanced when it comes to the charging tech because it supports wireless charging as well. And you do actually get reverse wireless charging on this as well, or power share as Samsung has called it, which allows you to share your charge with another wireless charging device just by powering it on. You can turn it on here in the, uh, the icons, wireless power share, and then you just stick something on the back and it will charge up. So finally, let's turn our attention to the camera tech, and it's a very different hardware setup on both of these smartphones. Here on the Galaxy S10e, you get a 12 megapixel primary lens. It's got a dual aperture, which you can switch between f1.5 and f2.4, either manually or automatically. And that's backed up by a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, gives you a 123 degree view of the world. Here on the Honor View 20, it's actually a single lens setup. It's a 48 megapixel snapper, f1.8, and there is a secondary lens, but it's a time of flight camera. That's used to basically accurately measure distances to give you a, a 3D view of the world. And that doesn't really seem to be in play right now. That's probably more of a future-proof thing. So let's dive on into the camera apps. Of course, it's a proprietary camera app. So again, you'll find a very different experience on both of these smartphones. You do, of course, get a form of AI mode scene optimizer here on the uh, Samsung Galaxy S10e and it's just good old AI mode here on the Honor View 20 and that's just basically a smart scene recognition just tries to recognize what you're trying to shoot and then adjusts the settings accordingly. Well the photos come out rather well on auto mode on both of these smartphones. HDR conditions are well met. Colors come out really nicely as well. We have found that the Galaxy S10e it tends to be a bit blase with that dual aperture thing. Sometimes it'll swap to f2.4 when you're trying to shoot something where f1.5 would actually work really nicely especially nice vivid scenes really bring out those beautiful colors and unfortunately end up in quite sort of dull 
uh, photos as a result. So we definitely recommend if, you, uh, if you're feeling up to it, switch into that pro mode and manually controlling it instead. And we've got to say as well, the Honor View 20 definitely takes better low light shots using its dedicated night mode. It's a long exposure mode and it re works really well, especially in cityscapes, things like that, where you've got some lighter elements and make sure that those are not overblown. Whereas again, the Samsung Galaxy S10e, it switches that f1.5 aperture, sucks up a lot of light, but unfortunately it means the overall feeling is it's kind of over saturated and if you are shooting a building with lights something like that then those lights will be overblown and of course you do get a portrait mode on both smartphones as well or a live focus as the galaxy s10e terms it and of course you've got a whole array of effects that you can uh, turn on in order to get some very jazzy uh, final results. The Honor View 20 does occasionally muck up with the uh, depth perception because of course it does only have that primary lens that it's relying on. Kind of weird that it doesn't use the time of flight camera to help out in that regards, but never mind. Because in the Galaxy S10e here, great results every time. Uh, if you switch to the video as well, the Galaxy S10e is definitely our favorite when it comes to the video chops. As you can see, both smartphones can shoot up to 4K resolution, although you can actually do it at 60 frames per second here on the Galaxy S10e. And you also get the option to shoot HDR videos as well, standard HDR or HDR 10 plus if you've got a supported telly, great stuff. And what it does is it basically just optimizes the, uh, the brightness levels to suit the particular scene that you're shooting. Another feature that we really love here on the Galaxy S10e is the super steady mode as well. This is only available in full HD levels and not with that HDR 10 plus active, but it means nice smooth results. Even if you're running, cycling, whatever you're doing at the time, it really, really does cut down on the judder. It's impressive stuff. And then if we just swap around to those front facing cameras, you get a 10 megapixel snapper here on the Galaxy S10e, and it's a 25 megapixel here on the Honor View 20. So you do get slightly sharper shots here on the View 20, although to be fair, the Galaxy S10e turns out perfectly fine selfies as well. Both final HDR situations as well. I think the S10e slightly has it when you're shooting against a brighter sky, you tend to get a bit more definition on your face and everything, but they'll do the job just fine and they both again do have a sort of portrait mode as well which you can uh, can slap on but it seems particularly weak here on the s10e occasionally balders up on the honor view 20 so i'd only use that if you absolutely have to so that right there is how samsung's galaxy s10e stacks up against the honor view 20. as you can see even though there's a gap between them in terms of the price point there's not actually that much of a gap between them in regards with many of the features certainly the software uh, chops pretty much the same on both smartphones you get solid performance here on the honor view 20 for that asking price it'll play PUBG on those top detail levels no problem run all of your apps very smoothly. The battery life is where the Honor View 20 really excels compared with the Galaxy S10e. You'll comfortably make it through a full day even with full on use whereas the Galaxy S10e does tend to struggle a bit with that smaller battery. And in terms of the camera tech we actually prefer the Honor View 20 in some situations as well such as that low light. However of course when it comes to watching and recording video the Galaxy S10e has it with that gorgeous HDR 10 plus screen and of course the HDR 10 plus chops plus the likes of the super steady mode and what have you. So which one are you more tempted by and why? Definitely let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers.